Hello and welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're taking a look at Bhutan. Did you know Bhutan is nestled high in the Himalayas between China and India, boasting three distinct geographic regions? From snow-capped peaks to lush tropical plains, its landscapes are diverse and stunning. Also, did you know that Bhutan's history dates back over a thousand years, marked by territorial conflicts and the emergence of a unifying dynasty? But here's a cliffhanger for you. How did Bhutan transition from absolute monarchy to a constitutional democratic monarchy? Join us and stay to the end to find out the intriguing answer to this historical transformation. Bhutan is a small landlocked country that sits high up in the Himalayan mountains between China and India in South Asia. Bhutan has three main geographic regions, the greater Himalayas in the north, the hills and valleys in the center, and the Duas plains in the south along the border with India. The Himalayas dominate the landscape in northern Bhutan with extremely tall, rugged, snow-capped peaks. Glaciers and alpine valleys carved by rivers flowing southward characterize this remote area. As we travel south, the Himalayas transition into forested foothills and then central fertile valleys and basins drained by the Wang Chu River system. This more temperate central region is where most Bhutanese live and grow crops. The capital city Thimphu sits in one of these mountain valleys at an elevation of 7,000 feet. With over 100,000 people, Thimphu is Bhutan's largest city and economic hub. Other notable central towns include Punaka, the old capital, and Fuenchaling, an important trade city near India. Reaching Bhutan's southern border, we encounter the Dua Plain, a hot, lush, tropical area at just 200 to 500 feet above sea level. Dense forests filled with wildlife cover these lowlands which transition into India. Major southern cities hugging the Indian border include Gelapu and Samdrup Jonkar. The remote Himalayan country of Bhutan has a long and storied past going back over a thousand years. Situated between powerful China and India, Bhutan has navigated its place on the global stage by isolating itself for centuries and adopting innovative policies balancing modernization with ancient traditions. The early peoples of Bhutan were followers of the animistic Bon Religion until Buddhism took hold starting in the 700s CE. For centuries, Bhutan was made up of localized chiefdoms and small kingdoms, constantly warring for regional control with Tibetans to the north and Indians to the south. By the 1600s, the region was unified under the rule of Ngawang Namgyal, a Tibetan Buddhist Lama. He established a comprehensive code of law and centralized government that brought stability to Bhutan for the first time while strengthening ties to Tibet. However, after his death in 1651, Bhutan fell into turmoil over succession. Competing Penlops or governors representing pro-Tibet and pro-Mongol factions fought for power across shifting alliances over the next two centuries. Centralized control weakened during this roller coaster period as the office of the Shabdrung or spiritual ruler lay empty and civil wars repeatedly broke out around various claims to the throne. Temporary and generally ineffective. Shabdrung incarnations were installed but held little sway. The theocratic government essentially collapsed by the mid 1700s. By the mid 1800s, Ugyen Wangchuk leveraged his position as Penlop of the strategic central region of Trongsa to make himself Bhutan's preeminent political leader. Wangchuk used Trongsa's control of trade routes to extend authority across warring districts. Further cementing his rule, Wangchuk led the army against British encroachments from India, fighting the devastating Duar War. Though ultimately defeated, this consolidated Wangchuk's popularity 
nationwide. By 1885, Wang Chuk was universally accepted as ruler across once fractured Bhutan, retaining his local Trongsa governorship as his power base. Over the following decades, Wang Chuk's centralized control paved the way for unification and modernization of the Bhutanese state under his leadership. Then, in 1907, Ugyen Wang Chuk was unanimously elected as the first hereditary king of Bhutan the Gongsar Ugyen Wang Chuk. This founded the enduring Wang Chuk dynasty, securing the monarchy into the modern era. The position is not strictly hereditary, but rotational within the Wang Chuk clan. The Wang Chuk family continues to hold the throne in Bhutan today. Major political reforms came in the 1950s under the third king Jigme Dorji Wang Chuk. He dismantled the traditional feudal system abolished serfdom, modernized infrastructure, and opened the door to cautiously engage the outside world. His reforms balanced unprecedented progress with upholding deep-rooted traditions. Bhutan took a giant leap in 2008, after a century of steady change. The fourth king, Jigme Singi Wangchuk, voluntarily transformed the absolute monarchy into a constitutional democratic monarchy with his abdication. Multi-party democracy grounded in Buddhist spiritual values now defines this progressive nation that craves connection on its own careful terms. Bhutan has a population of around 770,000 people as of 2023. Its society is ethnically and linguistically homogeneous, though divisions exist. Nearly 75% of Bhutanese belong to the main Ngalop and Shachop ethnic groups, concentrated in western and eastern regions respectively. However, over a third of Bhutan's people belong to the Lhot Shampa community. Ethnic Nepalese who speak various Nepali languages and practice mainly Hinduism. Overall, up to 75% of Bhutanese practice a form of Tibetan Buddhism. Hindu groups, mostly in southern Bhutan, comprise over 22%. Islam, Christianity and Bon are minor religions. Many Hindus belong to the Lhotshampa ethnic minority. For language, Dzongka is Bhutan's official and dominant language, spoken natively by over half the population. However, numerous other languages like Changla, Kinka and Nepali are also spoken depending on region and ethnic background. There are over 19 living languages in Bhutan, a remarkably high number given the small population. Bhutan has transformed its economy since starting planned development in the 1960s, lifting living standards considerably. Once mostly subsistence farmers, many Bhutanese now enjoy rising incomes in tourism, finance, and especially clean energy, which now comprises almost 17% of GDP, thanks to investment in hydropower. Agriculture still plays an important role though, employing nearly 60% of Bhutanese and contributing around 18% to GDP primarily through crops like rice, corn, potatoes, apples and oranges. Forestry, livestock, and cottage industry weaving represent other smaller sectors. Bhutan remains a predominantly rural society with only 49% urbanization. Bhutan's small industrial sector focuses mainly on production of cement, wood products, processed fruits, alcoholic beverages, calcium carbide, and ferrosilicon. Bhutan sells surplus renewable hydropower to India which made up 25% of the country's total exports last year and funded critical imports like machinery, vehicles, fuel and grains. This trade drives the close economic partnership between Bhutan and India. Bhutan is a country with a rich cultural heritage that strongly impacts daily life. Bhutanese culture is deeply rooted in Tibetan Mahayana Buddhism which was established as the state religion in the 17th century. As a result, spirituality, ritual and concepts of karma permeate society. Giant zongs, 
monasteries, stupas and prayer flags punctuate the dramatic Himalayan landscapes of the Land of the Thunder Dragon. Festivals called Sekus celebrate saints and deeds from Buddhist mythology with elaborate costume dances often depicting deities and demons. The masked cham dances are especially significant. Traditional arts and crafts emphasize religious imagery, symbols and motifs in painting, embroidery, wood carving and paper making. Traditional clothing like the Geyo and Kira feature spiritual iconography as well. Bhutanese cuisine reflects the geographical and agricultural diversity of this tiny Himalayan country tucked between India and China. Staples include red rice grown at lower elevations and a range of meat, veggies, cheese, mushrooms, fruits and nuts from pastoral mountain areas. Bhutanese cooking also absorbed influences from Tibetan cuisine in the north and Bengali cuisine across southern borders. The most well-known Bhutanese dish is Emma Dachi, a spicy warming stew made with chili peppers, meltable farmer's cheese and vegetables like potatoes, spinach or green beans. It is served over red rice at nearly every meal. Other mainstay dishes include momos or small stuffed dumplings, faksha pa, a pork dish cooked with radish, thukpa, a thick noodle soup, and tingmo, steamed buns with stuffing. If you enjoyed this video on Bhutan, you'll love this next video.